sharing cultural recipes and swapping stories about why these dishes are some of our favorites. Our next stop is a flavor-filled trip to India with Chef Vika's Tana. Chef Vika's innovative approach to Indian cuisine has earned him recognition around the world, cooking for former President Barack Obama and other world leaders. He's also a judge on MasterChef India, an author of over 35 cookbooks, a filmmaker, and in 2011 was named one of people's sexiest men alive. Let's take a look at his road to becoming India's most well-known chef. Take a look. Growing up in India, you never saw boys or men in the kitchen. It was a stigma or a taboo because many people used to tell me that, you know, this is a women's job. My grandmom used to take me to the Golden Temple and it was in their community kitchen I learned the true power of food and how it brings everyone together. In 2000, I decided to move to New York City. I told my grandmom that I'm going to win a Michelin star for her and for the country. At that time, there was no Indian chef who had ever achieved a Michelin star. October 4th, 2011, I won the Michelin star. And after a few weeks, she passed away. So it was my tribute to her. I hope I have made the path easier for next generation Indian chefs to represent India's legacy and heritage to the world. Chef Vikas is known for blending traditional Indian flavors with innovative concepts like sweet and tangy chicken, chitrani, a curry that comes from the Jewish community in India, and he has yogurt kebabs with vermicelli, pickled purple cabbage, spicy mango sauce. Here to cook for us today, please welcome Michelin star chef Vikas Khanna. Come on out. First of all, the, the, the sight of your grandmother and you saying, I'm going to win a Michelin star and being able to take that to her, and I mean, it's just such a beautiful story. Um, that, that legacy that she passed on and that you would honor her and what she poured into you, how did it feel when they said, hey, here's a call, you've got the Michelin star? So um, people might not know, remember history, we have short-lived memories. In our college walls, we only had Caucasian chefs with Michelin stars. Yeah. So when I will ask, always ask my teachers or professors, why don't we see somebody who looks like me? Mm. He's saying, you've got to work under them so that they can win the awards. And you're not a leader. Mm. That, that one line made me commit to my grandmom that you deserve every glory for your cooking, for your patience. <laughs> And you've had such incredible success. You've opened eight restaurants. You're now opening your flagship restaurant here in New York City. March 23rd, the restaurant is Bungalow, and Bungalow is an Indian culture, means mansion. Yes. I love that your mansion is coming to New York. Yes. It is a community, community place where people feel that we belong somewhere. We belong somewhere. Well, you now belong as a part of the Tan Fam. You're going to take us through your... Sweet potato shot, which means to lick, right? Shot means shot. To, lick. to lick. Okay. <laughs> and I am ready to eat and just clean the plate. So okay. I'm going to take it. You're going to start off. <laughs> and by the way, QR code, the recipe's on the screen. So we have this large sweet potato, yes. purple sweet potato. So there are potato. two ways to do this. These are large purple sweet potatoes. They mm -hmm. are amazing. Ooh. You can get them from Asian grocery stores or some Indian grocery stores will sell them too in Jackson Heights. I just feel that their color is so amazing. Beautiful. But when you're traveling in New Delhi, um, you will see these charts being smoked on the street sides oh. with a little bit of tangy masala mix, which goes on top. Mm -hmm. So what I feel that it's good. Some people like to chop off the ed ends first, but I like to do it so less wastage. Oh, okay. Especially when you're grandmom's free helper in the right. kitchen. <laughs> Nothing goes so to waste. So you learned a lot of technique from your grandmother. Not Nothing everything. goes to waste. The true meaning of food comes from most of the chefs. It comes from the home kitchen, mm -hmm. you know. All right. And then you cut off the ends. Okay. I'm going to catch up with you here. Cut Just off the like ends. Just like this. Okay. You are amazing. Really? I just cut it in. Not bad, off. actually. <laughs> oh, Chef, 
I love you so much. You just gave me credit for just cutting off the end of a sweet potato. <laughs> All right. So we're going to boil these. Sweet potatoes. Uh-huh. So hot boiling water. Just okay. put it there. Depending on the size of the potatoes, it's going to take about 25 minutes. Okay. 20 to 25 minutes, depending on size. Lots of salt. And then the magic box is going to be... And I be... heard you traveled with this beautiful box. Um, it has your spices and it has special meaning. Yes. Ooh. It comes from every Indian home. Wow. They have their own individual spice mix. But when I'm boiling this, I would like to add a little bit of cardamom pods. Mm. So I have the seeds here, but generally when you're adding them, they, they, they bring such a good flavor, almost invisible flavor to the dish, which I love. In most of the dishes at Bangalore, you're gonna have layers of flavors, but you would not be able to tell it's coming from where, because this is gonna get strained out. Oh, wow. But it's gonna leave its beautiful flavors and legacy behind. This is gorgeous, and you would find this in most families' homes. This is beautiful. Yeah. This is a little fancy. Yeah. My grandmom used to have one with the stainless steel, and it has six containers. As I travel through India, Many homes have it, but the spices change because India is too divorced. It's like putting five Europe's together in one country. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I call this it. This is stunning. <laughs> All right, so then we have a, you're going to smoke the sweet potatoes. You have a little smoker yes. here with us. Yes. Okay. But of course, when we're cooking Indian food, we need one extra layer. So it just wouldn't be the oak wood, which is here, the shavings. Oh. We're also going to add some Indian Kashmiri ro dried rose petals. Those are dried rose petals. I smell it. And then we're preparing our smoker yeah. now. We already have two sweet potatoes okay. boiled and kept here. Okay. So what I like to do is, this is a little plate. You're gonna place it right here. Mm -hmm. And now we're preparing to smoke the sweet potatoes. Yes, you're gonna love this technique. Oh gosh, I can't wait. Yeah. And I leave it in the cylinder like this. You okay. leave it in cylinders like this. Okay. And what you do is you take a cloche, and you have this fancy machine. First I have one of these at home. It's still in the box, so now I know how to use <laughs> It's a Christmas gift someone gave me. Yeah. This Here. goes in right here. All right. Fits in right here. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to add some dried rose petals. This is beautiful. Smell of Indian temples and homes. I just feel that I need to carry that with me everywhere. And what you do is you just Oh, do the so gonna show me. This is amazing. Lighting, lighting a a world-renowned chef helps, helps me learn to smoke on live TV. Here we go. <laughs> Oh my That's gosh. It. Now you see this cloth. So we're starting to okay. smoke the sweet potatoes. And closer, this oh. is, this is, okay, let's finish this up. Oh. oh my gosh. Yeah. You're not gonna go anywhere, we're coming back. We're gonna finish smoking these beautiful sweet potatoes, a secret ingredient that Chef has brought from his restaurant. Welcome back to FM. Today we're going on a cultural adventure, sharing recipes from around the globe that bring us to this table right here. And Chef Vikas Khanna is here. He's back. We've been smoking these beautiful purple sweet potatoes. So this is under the smoker. They've been getting the flavor and soaking in the smokiness. Yes. But you have a glaze as well. Yes. Okay. So. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Takes me back home. It takes you back home. Yeah, it does. Oh. So what we like to do is, I like to do things which are not very um, common to do, some new techniques. So what I like to do is I cut it in half because that is my s serving portion size. Mm -hmm. And then we made a glaze here of dried mango powder. Oh. Which is amazing. You know, if you want to do a salad or something and you don't want too much of liquidy, mm -hmm. this is an amazing ing ingredient for that. We have some lime juice, some zest, oh. some chili flakes. And this is good to glaze this right Just here. Just glaze it on the plate. Okay, on the plate. great. And a reminder, the recipe, the QR code is at the bottom of your screen. It's also going to be on our website. Yeah. So then I just paint over the sweet yes. potatoes with the good glaze. Good massage, it needs Good it. massage. <laughs> I love They've that. Worked, they have worked really hard. Okay. The potatoes have worked really hard. They deserve a massage. They do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we all do time uh, to time. Yes, we do. <laughs> and there in the pan, you so are preparing. I'm making a nice chutney out of strawberries. Mm. So this is a very interesting way to do it. So what we have, a little bit of oil, I'm sweating lots of ginger, a mm. good combination with strawberries, cumin seeds, fennel seeds, and now I'm gonna add some salt, and then the strawberries. Oh, wow. Beautiful. 
Now, you did tell me you weren't making it as spicy as normal because I have to talk the rest of the show, and Chef was worried I might be wiped out here. But I love spicy, as I, I share tell. with you. I okay. love spicy food. So this is going to get blended, so it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what, how you chop your strawberries. Oh. It doesn't matter. So this is going to get blended. So here is because I love that rich red color, and also I like it that you know you can add beets to anything. Mm. They are so versatile and so amazing for you. And so are most of the spices, you know, so it's a, it's a great combination. This is right up my alley. The spice, the beets, the strawberry, that balance of the savory. This looks amazing. And I'm a chutney person, so this so, is great. So you finish it out. I'm going to make it to full. Okay. And then what we How do is... How long does it take to cook this uh, down? About four to five minutes. Okay. And then you let it get all the flavors combined. Okay. Then I'm going to add some water mm. and some apple cider vinegar. Oh, nice. Apple cider. Depending on the sweetness of the strawberries, you can add the sugar. Okay. But I don't like it to be too sweet because I love the combination of tanginess, mm -hmm. that smoky flavor coming ah. from there, and this. And the, we have already it's blended beautiful. this. And so once you've cooked this down, you puree it into this, right? Yes. I yes. love that. I love so, it. So this is the sauce, uh -huh. which I've already blended. So you plate it this way, you put the sauce on. Yeah. We have our sweet potato yes and then that's a freshly cooked mango chutney now we open the restaurant on march 23rd which is beginning of spring it also brings a lot of mangoes in indian markets mm. and and i should i mean i know that family means so much to your cooking but also the day you're opening your restaurant would have been your sister's birthday Your sister passed away. She passed away because of complications of lupus. Uh, younger sisters are like bosses at home. <laughs> and she was like my boss. And she was standing behind me in everything I did in life mm. since 2008 when she was diagnosed. And then you also understand something called that you take all your pain and you turn it into something like this. Yes. You, you. Beautiful. <laughs> What a beautiful way to remember your sister Radhika. And I think this is just one of the most beautiful dishes I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, the beauty of it all, the mango. So I'm going to dive in here. Yes. I love that it's also vegan, even though I'm not vegan. <laughs> I'm not vegan, but, I, but shout out to the one vegan in here. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> but I love that it is vegan, which I'm trying to incorporate, which the Indian foods do so beautifully, adding the flavor yeah. to vegetables. And this has all of this. Oh. <laughs> I love that you had to taste it, too, to make sure. First of all, the spicy, the oh. tangy, the strawberries. I've never had purple sweet potatoes before. Yeah. Uh, this is absolutely, it makes me want to go home with you. <laughs> we love you, you're amazing. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Give it up for Chef Vika Sana. The grand opening of Bungalow is on March 23rd here in Manhattan's East Village.